I, I thought the the coaching search was really interesting. Um, just the impact the Letterman had and, and the sense of I feel like everybody knew South Carolina needed to go a different direction and think outside the box because the the typical names came up, you know, the the, the Hugh Freezes and the Billy Napiers. And with all due respect to those guys, I mean, I, I'm so glad we didn't go that direction, especially like the Freeze thing. That's who I think South Carolina, everybody was expecting them, at least the national guys, to go higher. And I feel like, you know, you heard this so much from the alumni and guys I was fortunate enough to talk to and everybody, of course, that played for him. You know, they all wanted Shane to get the job because it's like we can either go with this, you know, kind of cookie cutter hire who everybody expects. But South Carolina is a unique place. It's a unique job. The culture's unique. There's a challenge to it, of course. It's, you know, let's call it for what it is. It's not the easiest job in the world. But you need somebody who understands what it is, what it can be, wants to take on that challenge. And who better than a guy, Shane Beamer, who literally – Went to Atlanta in 2010 with you guys. Has seen Carolina football at its heights, and he right. knows what it can be. And I think that was, you know, of course, again talking to alumni and talking, I'm sure to yourself, that was just that was really important. I'm really glad as as a fan, South Carolina took a different approach because again, it's one of those things. With all due respect, to everybody else in the past, you know, the Gamecocks, we've we've recycled the Florida alums and the Georgia alums, and I'm so happy to see a, a Gamecock really, you know, get his shot. You know, and like you said, you, you hate to reference up the road, but. Rolling the dice works out every now and then it does. So why not take the chance of one of your own? I, I well, think I'll, I'll give you an example here. Uh, Michigan <laughs> state had a young secondary coach, uh, named Nick Saban years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And he went and uh, did his NFL thing and with uh, Belichick at Cleveland. And he had been a head coach one time for one year. And that was at Toledo mm -hmm. and Michigan state really, you know, took a chance. They hired a guy, a guy that had been around new Michigan state football. And then the rest is history. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about probably the most outstanding, you know, defensive mind yep. in, in, in football history. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, <clears throat> and then they did the same there, Mark D'Antonio, yep. who's a South Carolina graduate. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you see, you got to give a guy a chance sometime. Yeah. I mean, these coaches don't just grow on trees. They got to, you know, they got to <laughs> yeah, start ball. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, I think Shane, again, you, know, you always hear patience mm -hmm. with people. You've got to understand. I mean, it's there's some work to be done. He even had to have patience with Coach Spurrier. I mean, he had to build it. He had to get right. the guys. You know, I mean, that, and that's the biggest thing I wanted to ask you, of course. But you know, everybody asked me, you know, what are you looking for in year one? If you want to talk about the schedule and talk about record, and you know, <clears throat> certainly you want to win games because you know, as you win games, you build momentum, and you know, as a coach, it shows the kids, hey, what we're telling you, what we're teaching you, it works. You know, we're not just blowing smoke up your ass or lack of a better way of putting it. So you want to win games to, cause it's like, what comes first success or confidence. Right. right. But I think for this year, what I keep telling people is, you know, I think getting to six and six, getting to a bowl game is, is realistic with having the non-conference schedule back. And you look at the schedule, and like you said, there is talent on the roster. I mean, you really feel like there are some good players on that roster, but more importantly for me, I just want to see a well-coached football team, right. disciplined, excited to play, you know, encouraging each other plays the game the right way approaches each game the right way that's what i'm more so focused on because i'm sure you'd agree once you have the right coaches in place and you're building the culture obviously you're going to be laying the groundwork laying the foundation this year i mean you're already doing that right now but you're laying the foundation once you have that in place it's like okay now let's go get some big time ball players right. with all due respect to everybody on the roster like you got to have the Jimmys and Joes. I mean, I, I tell people, you know, and Nick Saban's a great coach for sure. Not taking anything away, but I watch Alabama and I'm like, dude, they just have better players than everybody else. I mean, all their players are NFL guys. Like, how are you going to beat them? You know what I mean? So you got to have those players. But that, that, that for me, you know, and I, I'd love to get your insight on in this, in this first year. I just want to see a well-coached team and a team excited to play and is proud to wear that, that Carolina on their jersey. And, you know, I think that's something maybe that was – Maybe missing a little bit from the last couple of years. You know, DJ when I have on the show, he's talking about somewhere that the, you know, the standard got lost, the culture got lost a little bit. I mean, it's former players were seeing it too, and so that's that's what I'm more so looking for in year one. You want to win games, but establishing that kind of getting that back, you know, in this first and, year. And, and we had developed that culture. I mean, with our <laughs> players, and I mean, because we on that practice field every day, it was no nonsense. Yeah. I mean, they, well, there were certain standards as far as effort. Mm and toughness that you had to live up to. And if you didn't, you, you, you know, it's going to be a tough <laughs> life for you. Mm. I mean, it's, I just remember, uh, making kids just if run to the football, mm. you know, and I remember some of them didn't buy into it, you know, and I said, you're not going to play here. Mm. I remember Stanley Doty. I mean, he very first game we opened up with Mississippi state on Thursday night. Mm. 
down there. And, and I kept telling him all camp, I said, if you don't start practicing hard, I said, you're not going to play. Yeah. And he thought that was, you know, that was, wasn't the truth. Yeah. And he played one snap against Mississippi State and we shut him out. Mm. He came up to me after the game. He said, what was that about? I said, I told you, if you're not going to practice hard, you're not yeah. going to play for us. Yeah. And Nathan Pepper came up to me after the game. He said, coach, he said, thanks. He said, we needed that for these kids, these players, our, yeah. you know, our teammates to see that you do have to work hard. If yeah. you don't work hard, you're not going to play here. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's about making that standard. I always heard from day one, you know, you get what you demand. Yeah. And if you don't demand a lot from them, then don't expect a lot from them. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. And I was very fortunate to be around a bunch of coaches then that were here in you know Carolina that we all had the same standard. Yeah. And, and we all understood that. And, and and like I say, being under Coach Spurrier, he was a guy that, I mean, that, that's that's it was his deal too. I mean, yeah. If you weren't going to play hard, I mean, you weren't going to play. Yeah. 